Hey everyone, it's Eric Thor here and in today's video we are discussing how stress can rewrite your Myers-Briggs personality type and turn you into the opposite of who you used to be. But before we get into that, perhaps you've been wondering where I've been. Merry Christmas, by the way. Oh wait, that was two months ago. Yeah, I have not really been uploading in the past two months. And I actually left two months ago. <laughs> exactly on New Year's Eve, I launched my video saying this is my last video on YouTube. So why am I back? And why am I still making videos here? And what does that have to do with stress? I think it's no secret to anyone on YouTube that creators really struggle with coming up with new ideas and that creators often go through stages of creative burnout. And I'm no different. In the past year or two, I've had to face a lot of struggles in my day job as a programmer and I've had to face a lot of stress in my personal life. This stress has over time become something very unhealthy and something that has had a very negative impact on me and on my content and on everything that I do. I found that stress was turning me into somebody I didn't want to be. I found that stress made me more critical where normally I'm quite empathetic. I found that stress made me more close-minded and skeptical where I am normally be very open-minded and curious. I found that stress would make me more reserved and more closed off to other people when normally I am quite outgoing and I found that stress would make me quite uh, scrambled and stressed and spontaneous where I'd normally have a clear structure, a clear plan and a clear goal. From juggling a full-time job to posting frequently on YouTube to maintaining contact with my friends and family and taking time for self-care, reading and going out and research, I've constantly felt scrambled for time. I felt like I never had enough time and I felt like I had to rush to finish everything. I had to make a video, I had to do this, I had to put that out, I had to uh, do well at my job, I had to reach out to and support my friends through difficult times. I had to be everywhere at once, I had to be every single person at once, I had to be everything at the same time. Now in this video we're asking ourselves whether stress can cause you to rewrite your very personality, whether it can transform or change you from who you normally are to what you, to something completely different. I've personally found through extensive experimentation and personal life experiences that stress definitely can change your personality and how you come across and who you are. And even your very self-perception can change through stress. And Carl Jung believed the same. He said that personality can definitely change through traumatic experiences and long-term exposure to unhealthy amounts of stress can certainly be described as a trigger for personality change. But on the plus side, I've also noticed that there is such a thing as good and healthy stress and that there is a good and healthy way to engage in and manage stress. Those of you that are experienced with my channel know that I've spoken for a long time about how personality is who you are in a flow state, right? And I've talked to about people how you can maintain a positive state of flow and how you can avoid what I would consider stress or something negative or bad, right? But these days, my stance on stress has gotten more complicated and I realized that there are ways to engage in stressful activities and difficult activities in the right way. And that if you engage in stress in the right way, you can experience this amazing experience of euphoria and awe and wonder. Now, I didn't just quit making YouTube videos out of stress. Sure, I just got in a new J job, it was a full-time job, and I realized I'm not gonna be able to make it anymore. Like, <laughs> I realized already last year in, I think, February or March, that hustle cussle culture, <laughs> hustle, cu hustle culture was not really for me. No, uh, I simply couldn't go on maintaining a full-time job and full-time work as a creator. In February last year, I had to pull in the brakes big time. And instead of being a creator, I learned to be a lover of nature. And I learned to go out and to experience the present day moment. I learned to find awe and wonder in seeing 
beautiful animals, in hearing birds sing, and in experiencing and seeing new places and new environments that I had never seen before. My eyes had literally opened to the world around me from being in the state of constant productivity and proactivity of doing, 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 making, 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 creating, 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 to experiencing what was happening around me. I had also developed a newfound love for myself. <laughs> I'd become more selfish. Like, from constantly thinking about pleasing other people, of providing for others, of helping others, I had become more and more self-involved, more and more understanding of myself, more and more accepting of myself, more and more positive towards myself. I'd stopped being negative and harsh and critical towards myself. And I started to realize that, hey, I'm a person, my feelings, my needs matter, and I have to take care of myself because if I take care of myself, I can take better care of other people. Now, we also have to speak frankly about a big change and shift on this YouTube channel because I was always a channel focused on describing the 16 personality types. And then later on, I wanted to become a channel for personal growth and I wanted to talk about how people can achieve flow, how people can show more, achieve more well-being and how people can achieve a sense of purpose and fulfillment in their lives, right? And I wanted to connect the two and I wanted to say that, hey, who you are is how you flow. But later on, I discovered that's not 100% the case. And so I found myself in a state of conflict. What do I care more about? Describing the personality types and making people feel understood and verified for what they are right now, or encouraging personality change and personal growth to the extent where people are allowed to make their own choices and to shape and become their own people because ultimately we all have our own individual path, our own individual journey. And so I had to take a step back to think, to write, to plan, to prepare, to resolve this incongruity. How do I manage running a channel on personality types and running a channel on personal growth, right? Because I couldn't just stop talking about personality types and start talking about personal growth. You guys wouldn't watch that you guys wouldn't click on those videos. I lose 90% of my base viewership and YouTube would say, hey, this guy is making videos that isn't interesting or appealing to his subscribers. He's making bad videos. Let's not recommend them to anyone. And so I realized if I wanted to talk about personal growth exclusively, I'd have to start a new YouTube channel. And I'm actually still working on that full time. Yeah, I'm planning, preparing, making, recording, and doing a lot to prepare this new YouTube channel. And it's taking longer than I expected because there is more work than I expected. I realized that I wanted to create a channel where I talked about personal growth, but I wanted to do it through storytelling and improved storytelling and sharing personal stories and stories that I've written and created about different people and characters and situations. I wanted to talk about philosophical, existential and psychological concepts, but I wanted to explain them through stories, art and video editing and music. To make sure that this happened, I started going out with a notepad and I'd go out I'd sit down for an hour, write for an hour, and then I'd go for a walk for an hour, and then I'd sit down again and write for another hour. And I'd mix and match this activity of walking and writing because walking helped my thoughts start running if I ever got stuck, while writing helped me put the thoughts down to paper so that they would stick. I also prioritized self-care. I went out to animal farms and petted sheep. I uh, went out into forests and nature. I uh, met up with people and friends and I took time to make sure that I really settled into myself and enjoyed this time away from YouTube because it's nice to have a break sometimes. It's oh, everyone deserves a vacation. I did my best with all of these things, but my day job was still extremely intensive and extremely difficult. I just got through my trial period of two months and uh, I had to struggle every day to actually do my job and to learn the tasks and to familiarize myself with the new code and the new work. It wasn't easy and I have had to really develop my thinking preference over the past year. Uh, I've seen that this entire last year I've had to develop my spreadsheet skills, my coding skills and my capacity for critical thinking. I had to learn to plan more, to set more realistic goals, to uh, 
prioritize more effectively which task was the best to do. I had to spend a lot of time just criticizing my own ideas, my own thoughts, my own actions and activities and my lifestyle and my health, my diet and everything about myself in order to figure out, okay, how do I want to live and organize my life in practice? Now, thankfully, I managed to get through my difficult period at work and I've also gotten a much better control of my finances and my budgets, which means I can also save more and invest more into my channel and into my work. Now, to celebrate my return to YouTube and to making videos, I wanted to organize a workshop with you all and you can join, you can sign up. So if you want to sign up for the workshop, become a patron at patreon.com slash at Patreon, you get access to all my resources, personal typing tools, and my library of written articles and extensive documents on the flow code. But you also get to be a part of this workshop and to ask questions directly to me and to discuss with me the topic of creativity. So sign up with the link below to become a Patreon and to join up for my workshop. And while I got through everything, I was absolutely exhausted with this entire experience. Stress drains your batteries quickly. Stress exhausts you, stress demotivates you, stress makes you want to quit, stress makes you just feel absolutely pushed to your very limits. And so it's very important to be kind to yourself, to recognize that it's normal to have thoughts and doubts and anxieties around the process, right? You have to remember to ask for help from your friends and family members throughout this period. You have to allow yourself to be a bit selfish and to prioritize yourself and to look out for your own needs first. These are all normal things to experience because stress makes us selfish and it should. When we're stressed, it's absolutely important that you are and allow yourself to be selfish. Do you remember a time like this? A time where you felt stressed to your absolute limits? A time where your mind and your body was pushed to its absolute max? Or have you found yourself becoming too comfortable lately? Falling into a state of autopilot without any challenges in your life, without any goals, without anything that seems to matter, without anything that pushes you or stimulates you. The truth is stress is a driver of personal growth and personality change, while autopilot puts us in a state of regression. When we're in autopilot, our mind and personality degrades and we become less than what we used to be. When we face stress the right way, in the healthy way, it drives positive personality change and personal growth. What I've discovered throughout this process is that stress is not just a negative process, but it's also a positive process. It can also drive you to experience a state of wonder, euphoria, and joy. So how do you get there? Well, to understand that, let's talk about the two archetypes that are of core importance in Carl Jung's work, the warrior and the lover archetype. These two archetypes are two core parts of the self. That means every single person has an inner warrior and an inner lover. The warrior is a person that approaches stressful situations and obstacles with a warrior mindset as something to overcome, to beat, to uh, fight head on. The lover is different. The lover doesn't see stress in these situations. When the lover looks at an obstacle, they look at it with a sense of passion and romance. When this warrior thinks about going to the job of making a two hour commute to their workplace, they think, oh my God, I have to get through up early. I'm gonna have to uh, get a breakfast and a coffee and I have to uh, get through all the other people in the commute and I have to get into a busy train and I have to endure this really difficult experience. The lover is different. The lover thinks, wow, look at the sunrise at 7 a.m. in the morning. Wow, uh, that's amazing. The sky feels so different. It's so quiet in the morning when nobody else is up. And that's interesting. Isn't it interesting that two sides of you can experience life so differently? One sees life as a struggle to overcome the other sees it as something wondrous and amazing to enjoy and experience. You have both of these archetypes in yourself, so you can choose when you want to fight through something, and you can choose when you want to admire something and to feel awe and wonder about something. 
This all just reminds me of that time I went on a one month commute throughout Europe. So basically what I did was I went on a one month commute with my best friend at the time. Uh, I was about 20 or something. And we just went from place to place. And we know we were young, we didn't have a lot of money. We were both students. So we had to scramble our resources. We had to eat cheap. We had to stay cheap. We had to uh, use uh, different forms of couch surfing and other alternatives in order to kind of get through the trip. Things got expensive. We were tired. We walked a lot. We had to embrace and experience a lot of discomfort throughout this one month trip. But we also got to see some amazing places and to experience some amazing things. I think especially about my last night on the commute when we arrived in Paris. We couldn't find a place to stay. Every single hotel and hostel was booked. We couldn't afford anything. We were out of money. Um, in the last ditch, I found a sheep hostel very far outside the city. We checked in, we got everything through. And uh, afterwards, we decided to go to the Eiffel Tower. And I said, you know, look, it's just there. We can just walk there, right? We could not just walk there. It was a two, three hour walk to get there. So we kept on walking, we kept on walking, we kept on walking. We saw the Notre Dame before it burnt down and it was just a wonderful building. And we saw the Eiffel Tower and we got through the entire experience. So you think that's, wow, that's the wonder. No, actually the wonder I experienced on the way back. So on the way back to the hostel, we decided to get a night bus. Uh, we tried to get on in the front and pay the ticket, but we couldn't get the room. So they just said, go in the back, go in the back, they yelled at us. So we went in the back and we didn't pay our ticket, of course. And then controllers came and they saw we didn't have a ticket. And so they decided to kick us out in the middle of nowhere, after giving us a 100 euro fine each. So we paid the fine, of course, and um, then uh, we got off in the middle of nowhere and then we had to walk home. And we walked 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 and it felt like the journey had no end. I think it was 3 a.m. in the morning and it was so dark and, you know, all the, the entire city was quiet. And I just felt every single piece of my body ache from all the work, from all the walking, from all the things that had happened. I was just tired. I was just walking like a zombie, like, oh, am I not there yet? But I also felt alive. I felt so alive throughout that experience. I felt, wow, this is what life is. This is it. This is what life is like, you know? And I felt a sense of wonder and I felt a sense of amazement in everything that had happened. And that's what happens when you take a stressful and difficult experience and you think of it like the way a lover would do with a sense of romance. Throughout this, I've also learned that the body can handle so much. We can endure so much more than what we think we can. When we haven't pushed ourselves, we don't know how strong we are and we think even the smallest thing is too arduous, too difficult and too impossible. But I've been through so much. <laughs> I've pushed myself to the limit so many times. I've experienced so much discomfort and also so much comfort that I can say that everything about life is worth experiencing and worth enduring. And I think you can do a lot more than what you think you can. And so what I believe it is this, when you experience stress the right way and you choose positive stress, healthy stress, and when you engage in it in the right mindset and with the right mental frame, and you choose the experience, you choose to engage in this yourself, not because somebody told you to or forced it on you, but because you said, okay, I'm just gonna experience this. I'm just gonna make the most of it. I'm just gonna make the best of it. That's can trigger personal growth and change because that allows you to experience discomfort in a way that feels comfortable for you because you chose to experience it and face it and you got to choose how you experienced it and how you engaged in that situation. And when you have that control, it's like you're standing in the unconscious world of everything you don't know, everything just beyond your limit, everything too difficult or too stressful or too overwhelming to endure. Too much information, too many people, too crowded, too <laughs> tired, too uh, mentally complex. When you face things like that, 
uh, and when you choose to be there consciously and when you choose to stand there like a warrior, strong in yourself, and when you go in through that you know, situation, it grows your personality and you allow your personality to become more than what it was the day before. When you choose to avoid stress, on the other hand, when you choose not to face difficult situations, they eat you up from the inside. They stay there. Problems don't disappear when you don't choose to face them. Problems stay inside, nagging. And they also drive a general regression in your mind and your personality. They slowly eat away your brain cells and everything that's complex about you. And it turns you into a stereotype of your personality. And so my argument is this. Our personality is who we are in a state of flow. The better we get at something, the better we get at being extroverts, the better we get at being intuitives, the better we get at being thinking types or judging types or whatever personality type you are, the better your capacity to experience flow and awe and wonder throughout that activity and throughout that state, right? And the more you challenge yourself, challenge your extroversion, challenge your intuition, challenge your brain, challenge your thinking, the more your capacity for these things grow and the more talented you become at doing this thing and acting in this way. By choosing to make it easy for yourself and by avoiding these things and avoiding push yourself, by choosing low hanging fruit, by staying in the world of the conscious, of comfort, of what you're used to, your brain slowly degrades and diminishes in capacity. While sure, everyone deserves a break sometimes to recharge their energy and to get back into themselves. And while it's completely fine to choose to have days where you just relax and enjoy the beauty of nature or of your favorite TV show, it's very important that these things don't become your status quo, that these things don't become the things that shape your experience of life. Because a life lived just in a state of passive autopilot, living in the status quo, is not necessarily a life worth living. It's not a life which feels rewarding. It's not a life which stimulates your mind. It's not something that kicks your brain cells. It's not something that engages your, you emotionally or fulfills you. It's something that just is meh. Something that's just boring. So that's what I say, say yes to stress and say yes to positive changes in your personality. Stress from learning to do things that other personality types can do. Stress from learning to do the things that your personality type can do, but even better. Stress from putting yourself in situations outside your normal personality or way of being. Stress that puts you in new situations that helps you experience the life of the world from another perspective. At least that's my point of view. What do you think about this topic? Feel free to let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. See you all in the next video.